Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee's Batman Hush is one of the most iconic Batman runs of all time and takes place in between issues 608 and 619 of Batman comics. With its fantastically wide array of characters, it boasts some of the most iconic Batman imagery in the entirety of comic history. In the early 2000s, DC Direct produced one of their most popular story artist-based action figure lines to date, producing a multitude of amazingly sculpted characters that look almost as though they could have jumped right out of the pages of the comic and onto our collector shelves. Fast forward to the present, and it's Mafex who has now picked up the torch in crafting expertly sculpted and designed action figures based on the incredible artwork of comic book legend Jim Lee. Previously on this channel, I've reviewed Mafex's version of Batman the Black and the Blue, as well as Superman, Catwoman, and Hush himself. Well now, today it's my pleasure to present to you my review of the Mafex Hush Joker action figure. The box art for this Joker figure is the same kind of bluish gray as the rest of the Mafex Hush figures, with Joker down in the bottom corner there and Batman Hush on the left hand side of the front of the box. The top's got another image of Joker with Batman Hush. Left hand side of the box boasts a completely different image of the Joker with, you guessed it, Batman Hush. And the other side, we see the Clown Prince of Crime just standing there. On the back, we have the same images as the front of the box, just now we can see more of the actual figure in question. We can see both of the heads that he comes with, and uh, look, even a picture of the back of his head. <laughs> and also his knife, the one and only other accessory that he comes with that's not one of his interchangeable hands. Here's what the plastic bubble holding the Joker figure and all the stuff that we got in the package looks like when it's out of the box, and interestingly enough, on the inside we have some more fantastic artwork of the Joker, probably the most iconic image of the Joker from the entire Hush storyline. And out of the packaging, here is everything that we got on the inside. The action figure stand with adjustable arm, five more sets of interchangeable hands, the maniacal laughing looking open mouth face sculpt, Seen here next to the closed mouth, teethy, sneering grin face sculpt. And of course, the knife that Joker comes with. The stabby stabby pokey pokey. Interestingly enough, if you look back at some of the very first promo imagery, you'll see that this gun here was intended to come with the Joker, but Warner Brothers sent a commandment down from on high to the folks at DC and all the toy manufacturers that produce figures based on licenses that they own, that they're no longer supposed to have any kind of firearms whatsoever packed in with any DC figures. That's their, they think that's their contribution to stopping gun violence or something. <laughs> The initial figure looks great. I love the color scheme. The figure looks nice and solid. The few joints that do stand out, that being the elbows and the knees, really don't look that terrible. The whole figure has great flow, and the paint apps on mine are neat and tidy. No complaints whatsoever. The head sculpts look great. I, I really, really like these. These are two of the best Joker head sculpts I think I've probably seen ever. And they look ridiculously like Jim Lee's original artwork. I will say for comparison, I did take this picture of the same figure with a smaller head popped on the body, and I feel like that's actually a better size fit for scale, but I don't know, you be the judge of that yourself. Now as for all the hands the Joker comes with, including the ones that came on the body, you have some open relaxed hands, you have some open blade fingers. You have two fists. You have two grabby hands. You got two pointy fingers. And then you've got these two hands right here, which were clearly designed for holding on to that gun that he actually doesn't come with. But really, all in all, I gotta say this is a very well put together figure. A very sturdy, very strong feeling figure. And the paint apps for one, the purple Joker coat paint apps, you can actually see that A, there's shading in the back here, and there's some shading in the back of the legs, under the knees here, in the crotchal area. So there is some shading on this purple, but it's a nice kind of silky matte 
sort of purple. I really like the fact they've gone with this kind of look. And then you've got his flower here, which just looks really, really good. And the same thing with his gigantic, huge bow tie. It looks very much like the original artwork, and they both match the shades of yellow and green for the shirt and the vest. Joker's tails are a nice soft rubber here, so I'm sure they'll move out of the way just fine when we're beginning to pose him around. All of Joker's gloves have been detailed nicely. They got the three lines on the front there and the cuffs. And the Joker's shoes, his feet, look like they do in the original source material as well, having the white over top of the black there and having the toes kind of sticking up a little bit. So it's an all-around very, very good-looking Joker action figure. Now, the articulation for this guy, the head is obviously on a ball joint and it moves around, but you've also got articulation down here in the base of the neck. So he actually has two articulative points for opposing his head around. The arms are attached to the body by way of a rounded hinge and then inside the body there you've got a little ball joint inside the body. You've also got this sort of butterfly right here. So Joker's actually quite a bit more articulated than you'd think he would be because he has this butterfly motion. Without it, his arms wouldn't be able to travel much more further than that. but. There is a little bit more motion to be able to push his arms in like this. And then you've also got the big shoulder pads here. So I do want to point out that that's roughly what you're going to get. You don't expect a lot more than that because the gigantic shoulder pads will get in the way. But, you know, you want the form and sometimes form beats function. You've also got the elbows. Now, this is one that I was a little surprised at. They do definitely do a lot more than 90 degrees. However, for double-jointed elbows, I am surprised that they don't do anything more than that. The Joker also has a full range of movement up here in the torso, and he's also got waist articulation, but you really don't want to do too much to twist this around because then you lose the lines for his vest like that. It's not like a regular figure where you can just move the figure around and the abs are here and the chest is over here. This really will kind of stick out like a sore thumb if you pose him like that. Also, Joker's hands are attached to his wrist by way of a rounded joint. You do have the cuffs of his jacket and the cuffs of his gloves that are going to get in the way, but, but in theory, there should be a pretty good range of motion there. Let's try again. Let's really try to push these. Now remember, you push him too far and, and his hands will just come off the pegs. So that roughly right there is about what we're looking at. Down below the belt, the Joker has the ball joints inside the legs, and they're also drop hinges. When you pull on them, you don't quite get the idea that they're drop hinges, but when you open his legs up like that and then you close them, you can see that there's actually a gap there and I can push his legs back up. So they are drop hinges, and so they are going to offer, I think, a really good range of motion. They're nice and tight. You can hear them clicking too, you hear that? Oh, I like that. I likey, likey, the ratchety clicky. That means they're going to hold their shape. And there's also a little bit of this kind of motion, too, with these legs. You've also got, with this Joker, knees that I really do like it when they decide to go with this kind of a knee joint because it doesn't look altogether too terrible. And it's also fairly well articulated. I don't mind that he doesn't get quite what a lot of people would hope for with double jointed knees. And from the knee down, he has the exact same sort of deal. There is some rotative motion there. It's not a full range when the leg is, like, is bent at the knee like that, but if the leg is straight, he certainly gets a lot more. And the feet have, I'm assuming that's gonna be a rounded hinge up in there, either that or it's a ball joint in the foot. I can't see because his pants hang over. And it's, it's actually, it's fairly well articulated considering he has all the the pants in the way, and then of course he's got toe articulation. Now if you're wondering exactly what this Joker's size and scale is, well these two figures here will give you a very good idea. DC Icons on the left and DC Universe Classics on the right. And then, of course, we need to pose him in between two of McFarlane's Joker figures. And now to bring in two more Jokers, Amazing Yamaguchi on the left, and the Mattel DC Multiverse Toy Biz throwback on the right. And of course, I need to put the Joker right next to all the rest of Mafex's Hush-inspired figures, Catwoman, the Batman, Superman, and Hush. But really, let's be honest here, this is the Joker figure comparison that needs to be made the most. 
This here is the DC Direct Jim Lee Hush Joker figure, uh, except for the hands. I changed those out. I didn't like the fact that he came with a gun that was stuck in his hand. And if I was to ask the question, who done it better? Uh, honestly, Mayfax did. Mayfax killed it. Admittedly, mine's a lot more worse for wear. And that face sculpt that this Joker came with, dude, it never really did it for me. It has the weird articulated mouth. It just makes the whole face sculpt look so weird. Ugh, let's get that off there. And let's throw this bad boy on the shoulders. There, that looks way better. If you ask me, that actually improves the figure like 100%. But either way, I suppose at this point, the final question really is, how do I feel about Mayfax's attempt at Batman's most iconic villain? His most beloved and popular of adversaries, the Clown Prince of Crime, the Joker. Honestly, I'm just gonna say it. In my opinion, this is the best six inch scale Joker figure that's ever been made by anyone at any time, any place ever. It's got a swell amount of articulation. It looks great. The paint apps on mine are absolutely perfect. And quite frankly, unless something really good, better than this comes out, I don't think I'll buy another six inch Joker figure ever. Like ever. Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna keep buying them, but the point is so far, this is my favorite. It's actually my favorite Joker figure of all time, six inch or otherwise. This figure gets a full 10 out of 10. A full 10 out of 10 from me. So if you could find this guy online somewhere before he gets cranked up in price because, well, just look at the price of Superman and Batman. If they're any indication, he is going to skyrocket in price just like the rest of them. So grab him now while you can before he hits that price. But anyway, those are just my thoughts, observations, opinions, and viewpoints. If you feel this video was good enough to leave a thumbs up on, you know where the button is. If not, that's cool too. Hopefully this video has been an insightful, useful, interesting waste of time for the afternoon or morning or whenever you watched it. If it has, well, that makes me happy. Have yourself a super awesome DC day, everybody, and take care.